Thank you for joining me for another reading through the New Testament. We are in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Make room in your hearts for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I am acting with great boldness towards you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort. In all our affliction, I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you. As he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice still more. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I see that your letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point, you have proved yourselves innocent in the matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake of the one who did the wrong, nor for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, but in order that your earnestness for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted. And besides our own comfort, we rejoiced still more at the joy of Titus, who because his spirit has been refreshed by all of you. For whatever boasts I made to you him about you, I was not put to shame. But just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proved true. And his affection for you is even greater, as he remembers the obedience of all of you. How you received him with fear and trembling, I rejoice because... I have complete confidence in you. The tone of the letter has really changed now. Um, not that it was cold or indifferent earlier, but there's such a warmth and sharing in chapter 7, especially for Paul's view of who they are as a people and how much he was grateful for them for making the changes and their penitent hearts, their godly grief that led them to make that change. There can't be any better application from this chapter for us in our reading than to reflect on that, how important it is for you and for me that when we experience grief that is godly, it's going to take us to change. It's going to take us to repentance. But if we bear a grief that we will call worldly in its contrast, which here he describes it as, um, well, yeah, worldly grief. That's what I thought, verse 10, sorry. It produces death. Now, that certainly can mean physical death, and, and that's the natural, but I think the contrast here is not so much about living and dying in the sense that you have breath inside your nostrils, but the person who will not let his grief take him back to God will experience an ongoing dying. He will live in disharmony with the way God made him. He will live in disharmony with his fellow man. He will live in disharmony with nature. Whether it is he or whether it is a she, it will just be walking death. And so, when you experience grief over the things you've done wrong, Make it godly. That is, pursue God and find in your heart the desire to be penitent, confess your sin, and he will be faithful and just to forgive you.
Join me again for another reading through the New Testament, making your weekday strong.